All right, we'll go ahead and get things started here. So I'd just like to introduce myself. My name is David Nolan. I'm an application engineer here at Smart Sites. Um, and today we'll be going over our Excel Reporter product, which is reports and dashboards uh, using Win911 uh, applications, as well as SCADA applications like Rockwell Factory Talk, uh, Aviva InTouch and System Platform, GEI Fix, and so on. All right, so before we get going um, with technical things, um, I'd just like to introduce um, Smart Sites uh, as a company. So Smart Sites is an industrial technology company. We offer a suite of capabilities based around a common purpose, which is plant health, or the safe, effective operation of a facility that meets both operational uh, goals and regulatory standards. And so uh, achieving and maintaining plant health starts with the control system which allows uh, plants to operate uh, efficiently with minimal human intervention. Uh, HMI and SCADA systems uh, monitor the control system. They record and visualize key process information uh, for use uh, by key stakeholders like operators, plant managers, uh, engineers, regulators, and so on. And smart sites approach uh, to plant health basically uh, involves extending and enhancing HMI using two products. Uh, called Win911 and Excel Reporter. Uh, both of these products deliver critical information to the right people at the right time. Win911 alarm notification software allows teams to minimize downtime and shift coverage by responding to alarms in real time, no matter where they are. And those of you in the audience for this presentation already know that because you're mostly Win911 users. Excel Reporter is reporting software uh, that processes raw data in the SCADA system into actionable insights and then elevates those insights from the plant floor to a broader organization. Each of these products, Win911 and Excel Reporter, can be used independently or bundled into a single license package with integrated features that enhance them both. They can be implemented at a single facility or across a connected enterprise. And regardless of the implementation, uh, these solutions propel organizations to better plant health through making better informed decisions, meeting compliance goals, and improving their bottom line. So with that said, we'll, we'll get started and we'll learn more about the Excel Reporter uh, piece of the Smart Site solution uh, in today's presentation. So we'll kind of begin by discussing um, how Excel Reporter, Win911, and, and SCADA uh, all relate to each other. So the SCADA system interfaces with a control system and monitors live process values. It logs historical uh, process values, machine instrumentation, and things of that nature, and also logs alarms and events. Win911 uh, basically extends the alarming capability of SCADA, right, by allowing alarms not only to be enunciated within a plant, but by extending them so they intelligently go out uh, to a directory of on and off call uh, personnel by uh, email, SMS, phone call, and mobile app. Excel Reporter extends the, the data capabilities of SCADA, right? It makes the process data uh, available to more people in the form of actionable insights using connectors to uh, systems like Rockwell, GE, Aviva, and so on. Excel Reporter can also connect to Win911 and assess the performance of the Win911 notification application. Right? So as Win911 uh, is extending notifications out to its contact directory, it's logging a history of its activity to a time series database. And Excel Reporter can use that database to assess uh, what notifications are happening most frequently. In other words, nuisance or bad actors. Uh, it can assess the distributed workload among the different contacts in the directory uh, and provide um, other metrics and insights into the performance of Win911. So obviously uh, this presentation is geared towards Win911 users, but just to sort of briefly go over uh, the functionality of our Win911 product, this is based around connecting to the live uh, industrial alarm and event um, system inside of a plant, and then extending those alarms out as remote notifications uh, in the form of email, SMS, mobile, uh, and smartphone app. Um, it, it can do this by intelligently routing those notifications through policies that decide you know, who the best person is to send a notification to at any point in time uh, with the ability to check on and off call scheduling 
uh, and the ability to use a tiered escalation as well from one person to the next. Excel Reporter is report and dashboard software. And it's used in, in many of the same industries as Win 911 uh, and by many of the same people or the same types of people. So it's used uh, very commonly in water treatment. Uh, and this is an example of a water treatment report. Uh, this is a regulatory report form uh, distributed by the state government in, in Massachusetts, uh, where the Smart Sites Boston offices are located. And this uh, is a drinking water compliance form that would have to be completed on a monthly basis uh, by any municipal drinking water plant operator. Uh, the form is distributed as an Excel workbook, so it can be imported into Excel Reporter uh, and automated uh, using the data available from a plant SCADA system. In wastewater treatment, we have many of the same concepts with regulatory reporting. Um, in manufacturing, maybe the reports are more operational in nature, uh, measuring the relative output of different machines, production lines, or even facilities in an enterprise. Energy management, uh, users typically are interested in monitoring trends and relationships between demand and generation. And we won't really go through every single example in this list in detail. The, the point that we're really trying to drive home um, in this uh, slide is just the flexibility of the product. What uh, types of SCADA technology does it work with? So for small plants and uh, maybe OEM uh, deployments. It can work uh, directly against uh, live data inside of a PLC with no database or logging mechanism sitting between the PLC and the reports. Uh, we call this report as a run technology and, and again it's a very simple streamlined low-cost solution for, for smaller scope reporting systems. Excel Reporter can work uh, with HMI systems like Factory Talk, iFix, InTouch, Delta V, Ignition, and, and so on. Uh, and it can report either from live data or the data logs um, that are maintained to handle functions in the HMI, such as trend displays. Excel Reporter also works with proprietary historian databases. Think Factory Talk Historian, Aviva Historian, GE Prophecy, BT SCADA, Ignition, uh, Delta V Historian. It also works with relational data. So think uh, alarm and event data in your SCADA system, reporting on uh, alarm management metrics. And it works with the uh, event notification data uh, that's logged by Win911. Now let's talk a bit about the workflow of Excel Reporter. So we, uh, the workflow of Excel Reporter happens in four uh, steps. So first you connect up to a data source or data sources. Uh, think connecting to your SCADA system. Uh, maybe you're also connecting it up to your Win911 system. Once you've connected to data sources, you can design templates uh, either using the uh, standalone uh, design studio or the Excel add-in. And once you've designed templates, uh, you can generate reports on time or on event. So think of collecting some machine KPI continuously every so many minutes around the clock or based on an event that's happening in the process. Uh, you can also generate reports on demand. So think of a user logging into a web browser client, specifying a time frame, specifying data points of interest, specifying any additional filters they'd like to apply, and sort of interactively mining their data uh, through that dashboard client. In terms of uh, distributing reports and dashboards, uh, if you're using Excel Reporter's uh, Windows thick client or browser thin client, uh, you can view, generate, and download reports in standard file formats like workbook PDF uh, you know, from there. Uh, those same formats, reports can be generated automatically and distributed around a network or by email or by FTP. And Excel Reporter can also sort of act as um, middleware, if you will, between a SCADA network um, and a business network by generating metrics, uh, storing them as CSV or XML or other forms of text files, and exporting them over, say, into a DMZ. Uh, it can insert data directly into database tables to create its own history of, of metrics. And in our next release in November, there will also be a REST API available so that entire uh, reports or specific data points can be requested um, from code uh, by any software that includes a REST client. Um, some commonplace examples that come to mind are things like Power BI, Tableau, and, and so on. What sets Excel Reporter apart compared to other reporting solutions? It's the only workbook solution designed for the plant floor. So 
It's not an Excel add-in. It's its own custom workbook engine that operates in the same file formats as Excel. Um, but what that means is basically you don't have to have Excel installed to use the product, but you can use all the same skills that you know from Microsoft Excel uh, and basically take those skills that you've used to generate documents in Excel and use them to create uh, fully automated reporting solutions or interactive um, dashboarding solutions that you can access from a browser. It's got a powerful analytic engine that turns the raw data uh, in the SCADA system into metrics and KPI. So think of logging machine instrumentation like a temperature or a pressure and then uh, deducing metrics based on that min, max, average, total difference, so on. In terms of licensing, it is, there's no limit on the number of tags or reports that you can create with any Excel report or license, uh, which is a limitation um, that you do see with other reporting solutions. It's got out of box templates that are accessible through a wizard. So you can get um, general functionality like trends, tables, min, max, average, deltas, uh, just through a wizard tool without even learning the design tools. And you can use those built-in templates as sort of a basis to create your own custom solution as well by building onto them. It's got features that go beyond reporting. So it's got data logging. It can keep track of the timeframes of key events that are happening in your process. So it's easy to get performance metrics based on them. Um, it can do some light duty time series data logging. Um, the product's not a replacement to a plant historian, of course, but um, for smaller scale data logging where a historian uh, may not quite be um, feasible due to scope or budget, it can do some light duty um, data logging and does have tools obviously to report uh, on the data that is logged by its logging component. It's got manual data entry capability. So um, in certain applications, there are points that are not, they don't really translate to a sensor, say in a SCADA system. Think chemical additions in a water plant, um, lab analysis. Maybe there's an event that creates a, an incident report that must be filled out by an operator. The form application can sort of be used for those types of applications. And it does have a dedicated ISA 18.2 alarm uh, management module um, that can automatically assess the performance of your alarm system um, against a, a standard framework. There are two types of installations uh, that can be implemented with Excel Reporter. The local installation is sort of designed as a, uh, a push method of reporting. It sits on a network with the data source, Win911, SCADA, PLC, whatever it is, and generates reports automatically in standard file formats, workbook, PDF, web page, printout, email. And there's also a local client on the desktop where Excel Reporter is installed that allows users to generate on-demand ad hoc type reports from that desktop session. Excel Reporter Distributed it contains all the same features as the local edition, but that on-demand um, interactive reporting just becomes a lot more powerful because not only are we doing it uh, from the desktop where we've installed the product, we can have a team of multiple people all running their own sessions and clients around a network, viewing, generating, downloading, uh, extracting their reports um, from the SCADA system. So now let's talk specifically about Excel Reporter for SCADA systems. And if you recall the, the diagram uh, shown in the previous slide, we're, we're talking in the context of SCADA data versus Win911 data. So with SCADA data, uh, we can access uh, tag history. We, we kind of spoke about the analytic engine uh, a little bit previously, um, but it's able to interface with uh, raw time series data, history of instrumentation, no sensor data, turn it into calculations, min, max, average, total, uptime, downtime. It can measure the amount of time, say an analog was in a certain state. In other words, uh, throughout the shift, uh, how much of the time was my, uh, oven's temperature above a certain uh, threshold. And it can get incredibly flexible and, and nuanced in the, in the way that it produces calculations. And, and one good example of this sort of cascading type of calculation um, is in the water treatment industry where there's a concept of contact time determination for, for chlorinated treatment solutions, right? So in those, you have to measure rolling um, averages of the system flow and then at the time of the maximum of the rolling averages, we have to go back uh, and look at the minimum residual chlorine in the system at that point in time. And so it does have that level of configurability where it can automatically produce these very nuanced calculations. Uh, obviously dealing with, with SCADA system um, history, uh, that does enable you to do the on-demand uh, data mining interactive type reporting using the reporting client. 
And if you'd like to see an example of what that looks like, you can at xlreporter.net. And for anyone in the audience or, or, or viewing the recording, uh, I would encourage you to check that uh, website out both on your desktop uh, as well as a phone or, or even a, a tablet or an iPad uh, if you have one. Uh, and the target users for, for this solution are uh, people looking to extend the function, functionality of uh, a, an HMI SCADA deployment. So uh, maybe they're, they're getting trends uh, they can look at on the HMI screen, but they need to turn that into more automated, uh, more analytical um, data collection. Some case studies we can kind of talk about now to, to sort of talk through how Excel Reporter is being used in, in the field today by our customers. So one example is overall equipment effectiveness or, or OEE. And this is something that, that people in the audience uh, may not know about, or, or they may know much more about it than I do. But in, in general terms, OEE is sort of a standardized way to calculate the effectiveness of any sort of loop in a, in a production facility, whether that be a single machine, a production line, or, or the entire facility itself. But OEE basically measures um, the availability of the machine, how, how much of the time was it running compared to how much time we had planned to run it. Um, what is the performance of the machine? How much output did it generate compared to what we um, planned for it to, to generate? And the quality of that output, right? How much of the output was actually accepted, say, versus rejected? And all three of these factors are, are basically multiplied into a percentage that gets relayed as the OEE score. Um, and Excel Reporter uh, can generate these scores basically by taking in a combination of, of manual set points uh, and measured um, data um, crunching those numbers into a score, also breaking out the individual metrics, right? The availability, quality, and performance, uh, and then automating that, say, on an hourly basis or making it available as an on-demand interactive uh, dashboard that's, that's in a web browser. Uh, it can also track the causes of, of downtimes um, if that data is available in the control system. So that, say, you, you see an OE report um, that has a lower score um, than you were expecting it to, you can actually dive deeper in and drill down and actually look at the reasons why maybe that that, that score was was so low um, at that time so that uh, you can look towards you know, continuous improvement of the process going forward. Case study for water treatment. Um, again, we're kind of going back to regulatory reporting where this is a situation where uh, a plant operator has to generate a monthly, say, surface water treatment um, report for the, the state government. Typically, that's a task that involves um, a lot of manual labor, manual calculation, manual copying and pasting of values in, into the, the proprietary form layout. Uh, with Excel Reporter, this can be fully automated um, using a combination of SCADA and manual data. So if we know certain points like flow and turbidity are being measured from the SCADA system, they can be automated onto the government form. Um, if other um, parts of the form, such as chemical additions, are more manual in nature. Uh, they can be uh, filled out using Excel Reporter's data entry forms. And at the end of the month, the report is completely generated using a combination of, of those two um, data sources. Case study for life science or food and beverage. These are processes we we're talking about that are, are more discrete in nature, right? We're not measuring, say, flow continuously uh, around the clock or over the course of a month in a water plant, we're measuring something that's happening over a discrete time frame, right? So this could be clean in place, it could be pasteurization, it could be packaging, it could be batch production um, of a food or beverage product. Um, whatever it is, these types of solutions require um, measurement of discrete time frames, right? And Excel Reporter does this by looking at live data in the control system and looking for a signal that determines when a process is starting or stopping. When a process starts, such as in this case, a, a clean in place of a liquid bearing vessel in a, a food and beverage solution, it can take down metadata about that discrete event, right? The, the vessel that's being cleaned, the, um, the operator who was logged into the machine at the time, a uh, route that the cleaning solution is taking through the, the pipe uh, system. And, can capture all that into the report along with say set points about what's supposed to happen according to a particular recipe at certain points in the process. Then while the process is running, uh, it can measure uh, instrumentation data, say in Trendit, and compare those measurements against uh, what is supposed to happen at certain um, steps in the cycle, right? So we can visualize uh, when those steps have started and what the KPIs were being measured at at that point in time. So it gives a clear picture of the effectiveness of the process. Um, 
And at the end of this process, XORBWR can then publish the report. So say it could send it out to someone by email, save it to a file server, uh, save it to an encrypted PDF. Um, we even have an electronic signature module that can be used so that uh, the, the concept of a human being validating the process and the report can be automatically saved into a PDF file. Quality control, think of this as kind of um, CMM light. <laughs> Maybe there's a, say, a machine operating on a series of parts and we're measuring uh, things like actual um, coordinates that uh, you know, the tooling is, is hitting versus uh, the, the recipe or, or program in the machine. Uh, now let's talk about Excel Reporter for alarm management. So we, we've kind of talked about every, all the reports that we've sort of discussed or use cases we've discussed have been more or less based around um, numeric data, right? Measuring um, numeric instrumentation KPIs over periods of time. But uh, when we talk about alarm data, we need a different uh, toolkit, right? We can ask for the history of a, of a temperature from the beginning of the day to the end of the day and calculate the min-max and average on it. But analyzing alarm data is something that's just fundamentally a bit different than that, right? It's more relational in nature. We're looking at concepts like um, how many uh, alarms happened in a certain area of the plant. Um, what was the average acknowledgement time uh, of the certain class of alarms, right? It require, inherently requires more relational grouping and filtering type functionality. An Excel reporter uh, has many out of box, um, many out of box reports um, that can calculate some of these kind of standard alarm metrics, but it also has a wizard based tool so that you can build completely custom reports, uh, even if you don't know what SQL um, stands for. Uh, if you are an SQL expert, it, you can think of this sort of as writing your own SQL statements uh, or executing your own stored procedures uh, and injecting Excel reporters um, runtime variables into them and um, using Excel reporters scheduling components and on-demand clients to, to execute and visualize them. It also has an IS 18.2 alarm management module. Um, if those in the audience don't know about the IS 18.2 standard, um, this may still be very relevant to you because this is basically going up to another level of alarm reporting, right? The, the level one is essentially telling us what alarms have happened over a period of time in the process, which is important to know for, for many reasons. But the next layer of analysis uh, that you, you kind of get up to is assessing whether or not the alarm system as a whole is actually performing effectively, right? Is it actually making the process um, more efficient, more effective, safer, or is it distracting operators and, and actually uh, acting more, more as a nuisance to the effective operation of the facility? So this IS 18.2 standard is basically a set of metrics that will uh, answer those questions within a standard framework. And here are some examples of some of the um, met some of the visualizations that come with the ISA module, right? We're telling you uh, the level of alarm severity at different points in time in the process for the worst day in that report period. What, was, what did that information look like by hour? Um, how much time did we spend in different buckets of alarm activity to get the uh, understanding of um, you know, the average level of operator distraction. And there's also this top alarm sources template. And this one is a lot sort of more concrete in nature, right? We're looking at nuisances or bad actor alarms, We're looking at the distribution of all the alarms in the system. For example, in, in, in this diagram here, this report here, um, the top, 10 alarms in the system, which has hundreds or thousands, are 30% of the entire activity. So if we're looking at rational, re-rationalizing the alarm system, the best place to start would probably be over on the left of this Bredo and, and kind of going from there. Alarm floods are another one that um, basically tells us the periods of high activity and their time frame. So we can then go and, and evaluate how that's affected other areas of the process. Um, uh, negatively, uh, or to what extent that, that may or may not have happened. Case study for alarm reporting, oil and gas. Um, this is an example with uh, an oil and gas company, um, which had, uh, I think around half a, half a dozen rigs located in, in, in the Gulf. And uh, they needed to do some alarm system for performance assessment, assessment at those facilities. So they used Excel Reporter's um, ISA module to automatically generate ISA reports and then uh, store the ISA scores or metrics in a time series um, database, and then synchronize the, the data between each of these six rigs with an executive level database at their headquarters, 
uh, and then they used a seventh Excel reporter installation to run reports off of that data. So um, this sort of just speaks to, to both the usefulness of the IS 18.2 module, uh, as well as the scalability of the product and, and you know, the types of um, insights it can provide uh, at a, in a connected enterprise type of implementation. Now let's, we, we've kind of talked a lot about Excel Reporter working with uh, third-party SCADA data. Um, now let's talk about how Excel Reporter works with smart sites as other product, Win911. So again, we'll kind of revisit this slide briefly um, uh, in light of what we just discussed. And so now we can, we can kind of see the benefits of how Excel Reporter is working in this context. Um, and now we're sort of in this area here with how Excel Reporter can provide um, performance metrics um, on smart sites' own um, notification data. So the benefits uh, in using both products, using Excel Reporter and Win911, is that you get out-of-box reports that kind of hone in on, on some real um, obvious performance metrics when it comes to remote notifications, right? If we are um, allowing the alarm system to go and sort of put its hooks into our entire organization and reach people on the phone by SMS, um, by email, we want to know if 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 um, if those notifications are actually going out uh, effectively, right? Are they? Uh, do we have bad actors, right, that are blasting notifications out to people um, at a very high frequency? So there's a bad actors report that will will tell you that information. Um, there's a contact activity report that will show you the distribution, not by alarm, but by recipient, right? So we can see if particular people are getting overloaded or are not being reached by notifications, for example. We can see a breakdown of system traffic that uh, tells us the methods by which people are receiving alarms, right? Do we, do we, are we targeting a certain amount of mobile app adoption and that's not happening, for example? Um, and there's also a detailed audit report that just allows you to extract and filter um, any record or message that's been logged by the Win911 system. And this can be used sort of as a drill down exercise as well, right? If we do have a bad actor, for example, we can take a detailed look into um, how many times it happened over a period of time, when they were, who acknowledged it, how long did that take, and so on. And for example, some of these out-of-box templates, I, <laughs> I took my slides out of order here, but um, this is an example of the bad actors report. You'll recognize this is similar to the ISA module, right? It's telling us the Pareto analysis of the top uh, notifications. Uh, contact activity is visualizing uh, which people are receiving different numbers of notifications and by what method. System traffic, very self-explanatory, right? We have different um, levels of activity across different gateways or, or methods in Win911. System audit, that, that's your drill down, lets you look at every single message individually with interactive filtering. Um, and so right now, you may have noticed in the presentation, we've been talking about things sort of as two separate products, as Win911 and, and an Excel reporter kind of separately. Um, and that's because this is the phase one, right, of these, these two products being integrated by smart sites. Um, in the next phase, uh, the next release of, of both products, which will be happening in November of this year, um, some pretty significant enhancements, right, will be, will be coming out with these. So um, Excel Reporter will be adopting Win911's um, licensing software. So that means uh, you'll be able to activate um, Win911 and Excel Reporter licenses in the same system. You'll be able to bundle licenses of both products, uh, and you'll be able to synchronize um, Excel Reporter um, subscription licensing on the same timeline um, as Win911. So the licensing side of things basically just gets a lot clearer, a lot easier to work with, and there will be um, you know, bundling advantages available. Um, Excel Reporter will uh, include a REST API, which will allow any third-party client to be able to um, extract either entire reports or specific data points. So again, think on your Power BI, your Tableau, um, you're, 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 you're beefing up your ability to have Excel Reporter be a live conduit from a business system into um, SCADA insights. And this same uh, interface or mechanism here is also going to be allowing Win911 to automatically integrate Excel Reporter reports and information on notifications. So think of seeing an ongoing notification where all while also being able to see, you know, an, an EKG type of uh, trend, right, on a KPI corresponding to that notification or seeing um, a lead up diagnostic analysis report that comes along with notification, which will be able to help people, you know, pinpoint, diagnose and resolve problems even faster than they would be doing with Win911 alone. 
So this uh, more or less concludes the uh, slide deck portion of today's uh, presentation. Um, I'm going to transition now to uh, some hands-on, um, but if anyone does have any questions now or throughout the rest of the presentation, uh, please just do use the questions tab in, in, in the GoToWebinar um, interface. Right, let me just transition here. Okay, so if you are seeing my desktop, and I'm just gonna check the audience view to make sure you are. Yes, <laughs> yes you are. Uh, we, are looks, we are looking at Excel Reporters Project Explorer. So this is the first screen that you'll see um, when you install the software. Uh, it contains a hub of all the different tools that you use to design and deploy a reporting application. And uh, by default, it'll be loaded into this sales demo application, um, which is the same one that runs at xlreporter.net. It has a bunch of different reports that illustrate how the product works in different industries with different data sources. But the first thing that you would do as a user uh, is define um, your own application. And we're going to be defining an application that connects into uh, both Win911 and into a factory talk system. So if you'll notice here, I actually do have Win911 installed on this system. Um, I've got it connected up to a factory talk um, alarm and events system that's running in another node on my network. Um, and I've got that sending out uh, notifications uh, to my mobile app users um, uh, by mobile app and, and by email. And so Excel Reporter is going to connect into the history of this Win911 system. It's also going to connect into the history of the factory talk system that this Win911 system is also connected to. So think, think back to my crude diagram um, of the relationship between Excel Reporter, SCADA, and Win911. So we're using Excel Reporter to sort of leverage both of those data sources. So we do that by creating a new project. If I could type properly. And we give the project a name. What we're really doing here is defining data sources, right? So we can add data sources here. You can see that we have uh, connectivity to our own Win911 product. And we also have uh, connectivity to uh, tons of different SCADA technology from Rockwell, GE, uh, Siemens, Aviva, and so on. And we have a connectivity to open standards, right? Like um, OLEDB databases, uh, OPC, uh, DA, UA, HDA, and UA, HA, which is the UA uh, form of HDA, the UA historical. So uh, even if something you're trying to use is not on this list, chances are one of these custom or, or standardized connectors will be able to interface with it. That being said, the two things I'm going to use today are, are uh, Win911 notification history and Rockwell factory talk. So we'll start by creating a connector to Win911. And we'll do that by tapping into the SQL Server database um, that Win911 manages. And if Excel Reporter is being installed on the same system as that SQL Server database, these settings are all default. We'd be able to just use this out of the box without any uh, settings configuration. Now, because mine, my uh, SQL Server database is located on another system, I just have to specify the remote uh, connection information to SQL Server. specify the authentication, which can be Windows or SQL Server as I'm using. And then the database, uh, which is the machine name dot log, that's the Win911 historical database that we would be connecting to. So once I confirm this, this connector will be added into the project and I'll go and add another connector uh, to my Rockwell factory talk view system. So I'll use the uh, VUSE uh, data files connector. And this one connects into the tag history uh, that's used to populate trend screens um, in VUSE. And Excel Reporter can do the same thing um, for other HMIs as well as Historian. So even if you don't have the Historian um, product with your HMI, we can tap into the same history that's being used to populate your trend screens. So with Factory Talk, we put in the IP address of the machine where Factory Talk is running. I think I can actually put in the name the same way I did in Win911. 
And then the username, again, same thing I put in with 911 to authenticate to this factory talk system. And then I specify the application that's running on the system. And yes, I'm using the default instant fizz application that comes with factory talk for the past 30 years or so. <laughs> so I'll specify my application, I'll click apply. Now I've got both of these data sources added into my application, Win911 and tag history from factory talk. This message here is just telling me that the web server is switching over from that, that sales demo application to this um, smart sites one that I just created. Now uh, we are sitting in a blank project at this point. We have a couple different ways that we can go about creating reports. One of them is the template studio uh, that allows you to start from a blank uh, workbook file or import an existing Excel file from your system or the template library, which allows you to pick templates from a uh, wizard or pre-built list and adapt them to your data and schedule. Now, this is obviously uh, an easier point to start with for demonstration. So we'll start using this template library. And you'll notice that the list that I have here corresponds to the different um, data sources that I have available. Because I have a tag history data source, uh, factory talk, I've got all these uh, tag history templates. I've also got Win911 templates because I have a Win911 connector defined. So here we've got four different templates. I'll, I'll probably focus most of today's presentation on, on these two, notification source and contact. The notification source, again, as we kind of looked at already, is a Pareto analysis of um, the alarms, uh, notifications that are going out by Win911. So we can name this one top notifications. It'll use the Win911 notifications connector. And we can run these reports either on demand or automatically on a schedule. And again, for demonstration purposes, it may be better that I start with the on-demand method. Once I specify that, um, the local desktop client will, will launch here and I can pick on the notification template. I can specify a date range where I have data uh, recorded. Let's go back to January here. And when I click refresh, it's going to read the history of the notifications sent by my Win911 and visualize them on this Pareto, right? So here we can see um, the amount of time or the number of hours included in the reporting period. So let's say it's 48 here in this example. We had 596 uh, new um, active and acknowledged alarms during that time. That's an average of 298 per day. And because my test system is very small, that made up 94% of my overall notifications, uh, these top 10 that we, we see here. So on a larger system, obviously that number would, would go a lot smaller, but you can kind of think of this as the lopsidedness factor, right? The higher this number is, the more lopsided your alarms are towards the top bad actors. What do we actually see on the report? Well, there's a Pareto chart basically showing us that we have one you know, very bad actor in this case. It's this uh, Flushing Hills wet well low alarm. Um, this was an analog alarm and went off 432 times, <laughs> average of nine times per hour. So that's probably showing us exactly what this report is designed to, right? That we have an alarm here that probably needs to be rationalized because it's probably oscillating or chattering about its threshold very frequently. And we can also do additional filtering in here if we wanted to say take out um, the value match ones and sort of see a more even distribution. Okay, we still did have a, a high alarm um, uh, on a different wet well, right? So. This report is just identifying, you know, the, the potential, potentially poorly rationalized alarms that we have in the process, and we can pan around, we can zoom in and out, um, we can look at different time frames, and we can save this report out as a PDF file or Excel. We can uh, print it, uh, or if we have an email server configured, we can email it to configurable groups as well. Now let's take a look at one other template um, that we have available in the library for Win911. So I'll go back into the home tab of my Project Explorer, back into this template library, and I'll go into Win911 and I'll look at notification contact this time. So we'll call this one top contacts. Again, we'll use Win911, we'll use the on-demand method. And you can see when I'm taking these templates out of the library, I'm really not doing any configuration. I'm just essentially telling the software which ones I want to use and include in my application. So we'll go back into this on-demand reports client. We'll go to top contacts this time. And we'll go back to a time frame where we have uh, data. And 
And this one is showing us the same sort of Pareto breakdown, but it's by person, right? So we can see here, for example, Marty uh, and Terrell and, and Tamara are really getting the bulk of notifications. Really, Marty, Terrell, Tamara, Tony, and John. Um, and we have tons of people out here who really aren't receiving um, any notifications. And that might be something where we look at, you know, um, is that just because of the, the schedule or, or, um, or groups they're a part of on the Win911 side of the configuration? Um, or is there, you know, there's some sort of issue there where they're slipping through the gaps and they're maybe not receiving notifications um, that they, they could be. And again, we can pan, we can zoom in and out, oops, and we can um, save these out as PDF, Excel, printout, or email as well. Um, and so this is the, the basic a concept of, of, you know, these out of box templates that we have available with Win911. Um, these can be customized, they can be automated as well. So why don't we take a, a quick look at a view of, you know, how we would automate these reports. Right, so I'll go back into the template library and I'll go to notification source here. And this one, I'll call this one daily notification summary. Or yeah, I guess we'll leave this, we'll say this is uh, daily. We could also do it on a weekly or monthly basis. This time I'll select the scheduled option. I'll go next here. And this one is, I believe by default, going to run over the current day, every day on a daily basis. And it's going to save the reports out to a file, um, which is named after the year, month, and day, right? So today would be named 2023-920. Tomorrow we'd get a 2023-921 file and so on. The last piece of this configuration is the schedule, which is just telling us when this is going to happen, right? And so because it's a daily report, it's going to go into the application schedule and be run on a daily basis at 12.15 a.m. for the previous day that just ended. And this action here will save the, the report as a set of workbook files on the local system. They'll also be available through the distributed client. Um, but if we wanted to say automatically email this, it would just be adding another action into this. Um, schedule here. So we could say uh, we want to transfer reports. Uh, we want to email a workbook. Uh, what's the workbook we want to email? It's this daily notification summary we're working on here. And then the configuration is basically just a mapping of the recipients who are going to get it um, and the message text that's going to go along with the email. So we'll click finish. And this will launch, uh, instead of the on-demand reports client here, because we picked scheduled report, this is going to launch the uh, schedule designer, right? And we can use this to backfill the report um, as if it had run automatically over that time, right? Because we have all that history stored in Win911 to generate this report with. So I'll use the backfill clock tool here. And we'll go back, say, to the same time frame we were looking at in the on-demand client, right? So let's go to like uh, maybe January, um, 13th, or actually this would be the 10th, say, and we'll go to the 13th. So I'll click start here. This report will run, it will, it will tick through. Um, actually, it's probably going a bit too far here. <laughs> I think I accidentally ran it through uh, May. But we'll close this um, schedule designer. We'll go back into the workbook reports client and we'll go to our daily notification summary report. And we can see here that if we look at the same time range we did in on demand, we can see it's the same data we got in that client. It's just automating this. And then of course, at this point, we could also email the report out um, and so on. And we can also customize these reports, right? So um, I can open up the template studio here, double click on my um, daily notification summary report. When I open this, we can see uh, it is a, an Excel file. We could also run this tool as an Excel add-in. And we're basically looking at a blank version of what we saw inside of the reporting clients. And so if I was going to fill this in automatically, right, if I was in the mindset of somebody making a manual Excel document, I would go in and enter my alarm names. I would enter in um, how many times they happened. Right, and as I'm doing that, um, we are 
seeing the bar chart and the formulas all populate with information. And so that's really what Excel Reporter is doing. It's taking this uh, .slxx file and it's automating um, the data collection into the areas that will drive the visualization components of it. How does that work? Uh, there's a data connect interface that controls what data points um, from your data sources are mapped into different locations in your report. And of course, because this was one of the pre-built library templates, this stuff has been configured for us automatically, but we can use this as a basis to, to customize these reports, right? If we had different areas or groups, uh, we wanted to create separate sets of these reports for different people, well, we could do this by using this built-in template as a basis and then customizing it, right? So in here, we can see this pre-built query is going to uh, collect data from our alarm states and strategies table, right? That tells us what alarms are happening and what policies they correspond to. And we would also see uh, what columns we want, the name of the alarm, strategies, the condition name, uh, Boolean value match, the count of the records, right? That's our alarm quality here. And we can see how these columns in this connection are mapping into this area of the workbook. Uh, this is sort of a long way to say if we wanted to customize this, right, we could say add some additional filters in here, right? So right now we're filtering uh, for reports occurring within a particular calendar date and the state being an active unacknowledged alarm. We could also add in the filter here to say where the uh, the source name is equal to a certain um, server, right? In this um, application, we have um, notifications coming from a water server uh, and a, a, a WWTP server, right? So we could pick one of these servers particularly, and then now our report is gonna be filtered on that particular data. So if we come back and look at January, We can see we're looking at just data from that particular server, for example, here. So um, this is all a roundabout way of saying that these reports are very easily customizable. If we want to tweak what data appears on this dashboard, uh, we can do that by tweaking the connection into the Win911 database. And so we have the Excel workbook layout. We have the connection that, that bolts our data on top of it. We also have a naming convention which specifies, uh, in this case, say for example, the report is named after the month, day, and year, but it could be named after the, the, the day, uh, or sorry, just the month, or it could be named after an event that's occurring in the process, like a batch or a production run or something like that. The last piece of this that sort of sits on the outer shell of this configuration and, and just puts it into motion automatically is the first piece that we saw, which is the schedule, right? So this schedule basically just says, set the start and end dates to a one day time frame, and then run that report um, based on all the configuration that he has in that template right now. And so we've taken a brief look at um, uh, Win911 data. Let's take a look at SCADA data now. So let's make some reports from using the, uh, the factory talk view connection that I created. So here we'll go back in the template library on the home tab of the Explorer. And we'll make two reports that kind of illustrate the different types of functionality we have, right? So we'll make a line charts template. This is just going to allow us to use a trend to mine through our data. And we'll, we'll skip over running this one now. I'll actually create a second template. And this one will be, a, say, a daily min, max, and average template. This one, daily MMA report. This one will be a scheduled template using our factory talk view data. Here we pick the tags we want to include in the report when it's scheduled. This will be a live browser into your factory talk view system. So these are the different trending data log models I have configured in my FT view system. And let's just say I wanted to look at like some temperatures specifically, All right? So I can grab maybe my extruder temperature and a couple of mixer temperatures. Now I can pick the resolution I want those min, max and averages taken at. Right, so it's going to be hourly uh, records going down a daily report. If we wanted to do daily over the month, we're basically just changing these two drop downs to fit the timing of how we want this data captured. Naming convention here again. Remember when we had that Win 911 report, and it was it was named um, names like 2023, 920, 2023, 921, and so on. Um, this will be similar, but it's going to be a, a report file based on the month, and we'll have tabs inside the file for each day. 
So think of a multi-tabbed um, Excel workbook file. And again, this one's gonna run every day for the previous day. All right, so now we have the schedule here from our Win911 Bad Actors report. We also have this factory talk min, max, and average report here. So we can run this one, say for example, for the past several days here. Close this. We'll go into our workbook reports dialog here. Here's our daily MA report. Here's our September 2023. And we have uh, data from this the 17th on one tab, the 18th on another tab, and the 19th. That uh, the data that's um, in these reports is basically based on the three tags I picked, has the three calculations for each tag, has those calculations produced hourly over the course of the day, right? So um, let's take a quick look. I know we're running almost out of time here at how that's actually put together, just so you can see that interface to the tag history data. If I go into uh, the daily MMA report, we can see it's a blank layout here built by the library picks that we made, right? This many tags, this resolution. If you go into the connect interface for this one, we can see there's a connection bolted into B6, right? That's the area right underneath the heading here. If I double click on this one, it looks a bit different than the Win911 um, connection interface, but this one shows us um, the tags that we picked and they're triplicated for different calculations, right? So this is really easy to understand uh, for someone who is familiar with the process data but doesn't necessarily have IT skills, right? If we wanted to pick different tags for this report, we'd relaunch our live browser. We'd look at the, um, the tag space, which reflects exactly what it looks like in the VUSE configuration tools. We pick the tags we want, and we pick a calculation that we want. So, you know, in this one, we're doing min, max, and average, but we can do differences on a flow totalizer, uptime and downtime on a bit, um, and, and tons of different options there. Once we picked our tags and a calculation, we pick the time frame. And you'll recognize this screen, right, from the library wizard. If we wanted to change this from hourly metrics over a day, uh, we could put it to daily metrics over a month or any other combination of interval and, and time frame. But what's happening is this connection brings back a table, right? It brings back all those that those data points as a table. And that gets bolted onto this location in the worksheet. So if we wanted to drive other formulas, put trend charts on top of it, do conditional formatting, all that stuff works exactly the way it does um, in Microsoft Excel. Um, I'm sorry, I just noticed we had a question coming in for a while back um, from one of the someone in the audience here. Uh, about the alarms. Uh, each alarm has four notification behaviors. I think you're probably talking about um, active, inactive, acknowledged, unacknowledged. For a new alarm, we would consider the active unacknowledged state. Um, but since those are expressed in the database, um, you can configure that to, to work on um, any of them, right? So you could you could actually make that report to show acknowledgement metrics instead of new alarm metrics or any combination thereof of the states, if that makes sense. Uh, all right, so we looked at the uh, min, max, and average template. Let's just take a quick look at the um, the trend chart template, right? So this is going back in the on-demand um, template here, or on-demand client here, process trend, pick a time frame, we pick tags. And here, let's say I want to get mixer data, speed and temperature. So I grab zone one twice. I can pan around, I can zoom in and out. I can drill this down to where I'm seeing individual cycles of my mixer spooling up and cooling down and spooling up and slowing down. I can create instances here. I can call this a mixer instance. And I can also create an extruder instance here, right? So let's go back in here. I'll load these two tags on here. I'll save this one as extruder. Right, so now I can flip between these instead of having to rebrowse all the tags. Now we've looked at everything thus far in terms of the local clients, right? But we can also um, look at this in terms of a browser client, right? So if I go into my browser here, I just have to put in localhost slash XLR web. I was already logged in there, so it's gonna log me back out. 
you can put passwords behind this and users and control who can view and download and see what reports and all that stuff. So all that functionality is here as well. But I can come in to say, look at my trend template. I can flip between instances. The first time we run this, it's gonna take a second, but now after this, if I go to a particular instance, it'll be pretty lightning quick. I can download reports out of this, right, as Excel. If I turn that function on for my user, Right now I can pull this out as Excel. When I open this, we'll see, we'll see if I have Excel on this machine, I guess, first, but then we'll see that it looks like um, a standard Excel document, right? There's no add-ins, there's no magic formulas or links in the cells or anything like that. All right, so we'll say skip for now. We're gonna be in view only mode. No. <laughs> and we'll want um, we'll be able to see, for example, if we um, we want to hide this, we'd be able to see that uh, we have the raw data that sits behind this as well, sitting on a hidden raw data sheet. So it's a very easy mechanism to extract um, data from the SCADA system into standard file formats. And of course, we can also see whoops, we can also see all of our um, other reports in here as well. So our you know our Win91 reports are available inside of this client as well and can be downloaded as well. Now we have about three minutes left. The last thing I wanted to show you, um, you in the audience here today, uh, is basically what a finished end game application would look like, right? Using say Win911 and, and factory talk data. So this is a part of the cooking show where we say, put it in the oven for three hours. I've already done that. We, we take out the finished <laughs> application. Now we can see there's a lot more different reports that we have in here, right? So if I go back into my, my web browser here, It's not gonna like me doing that there. So we'll go to, here we can see all these different templates um, that we have in this project. So we have trends and, and MA and the things we looked at in the other, um, in the other uh, application we had. Um, but we also have, for example, the ability to um, combine Win911 and SCADA data inside of the same report, right? So if I run this one, we can see there's data coming from my SCADA system on a trend. I've got some min-max average KPIs here with conditional formatting telling me when they're out of uh, scope. And then I also have uh, alarm analysis here as well. So I can just see these two different you know, um, aspects of my SCADA system um, in, in the same visual. Uh, we could also look at an alarm um, lead up report, right? Which is gonna let us, um, it's gonna show us that the most recently occurring alarms um, in the Win911 system. So I pick this alarm, it lets us pick some tags or an asset to associate with that alarm, pick a trend duration, and then we actually see the behavior of these tags leading up to the time of this alarm. And we can extend this uh, duration here as well. So we basically get this as a way to see what the asset was doing right before or leading up to the time when 911 sent the notification. And yeah, I'm showing you this now in Excel Reporters web client, but in our next release, this is the kind of information you'll be able to get delivered with your Win911 notification automatically by email or in your mobile app. So um, these were the just two examples of, of kind of uh, more of a customized integrated implementation of Excel Reporter, Win911, and, and SCADA data. And so um, I think we're probably right at about the end of our time. Um, that we, we had allotted for this workshop. So um, I'll, I'll end the, the hands-on presentation here and then I'll, I'll kind of um, take time to take um, any questions uh, from anyone in the audience might have uh, in the moment that we kind of have at the end here. All right, well, if we have no more questions um, coming in from um, the audience here, I'll just take a, a second to say uh, thanks uh, to those who attended. Uh, and um, hopefully we'll, we'll be seeing you in some additional workshops we have coming up in the future. And we'll be following up with you uh, as well after the workshop um, to see if you're interested in any, any further discussions um, on Excel Reporter or with 911 or, or anything related to smart site solutions. 
Thanks again, everyone, for attending and have a great day.